So actually now what I wanted to get into and we, you kind of touched on a couple of this stuff is the the, the cypherpunk of uh, history, culture, and kind of uh, where all of this uh, cryptocurrency um, blockchain technology came out of. And I was reading a really interesting article. Um, it was a it's an old Wire magazine article, and it called the the Crypto Rebels, and it was talking about kind of mm -hmm. the the birth of it. In um, when was it? Uh, in '92, they had like a conference, but it even kind of goes even more back into the history. So what they were what they were uh, got got all together in uh, um, the Bay Area was uh, whether privacy would exist, exist in the 21st century. And so they were already kind of seeing... Um, and then the other interesting one was... Uh, was this Whitefield uh, Diffie? And he kind okay. of he kind of saw a little forward in the future. The problem... Because he, he was a MIT student and he had trouble with with uh, the multi-user computer system which held personal um, data and he didn't think it was really secure because it all depended on the administrator who had the access to the server so you know centralized and so the, your protection of your files was only in how much you had of faith in the the system administrator and so that's what that's where he first started to think that we kind of needed to decentralize things and he was even thinking further into the future and this was in uh, 1975 where he was thinking about um, recognize that the solution to to the problem was a decentralized system which held uh, the the literal keys so everybody had their own their own privacy to their keys and this is kind of like later on what what the blockchain comes up to uh, that's what's the importance of it because you don't have to have say faith in a centralized system um, it's decentralized you have your own freedom uh, of your own responsibility to your keys to, to access this and this is kind of what we touched on in the first half but um, um, your, in your research uh, have you digged into the whole cypherpunk movement and, and the history behind all of this stuff? Absolutely, absolutely. A Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are very deeply entrenched from the cypherpunk movement. In fact, Bitcoin is a product of the cypherpunk movement. Um, so I have I have a, a deep respect for the work that they've done, the hard work that they've done, and providing uh, humanity with the keys and tools for. Uh, freedom and privacy, because you know technology, as as we've mentioned earlier, is a double-edged sword, and you know it can be used for either you know positive or negative things. It's it's inherently neutral, and the internet uh, is an amazing tool, and we're seeing many great solutions and innovations coming out of the internet, and we're seeing you know, many horror stories of, of mass surveillance and, and um, you know, hacks and, and abuses also uh, coming from the internet or the internet being used for such. And so <clears throat> there's always been this kind of this digital or technological battle <clears throat> between um, <clears throat> centralized governments or authorities and hackers like the cypherpunks you know, one wants <clears throat> more surveillance, more control, and to restrict our freedom and mobility, or to at least go through their appropriate, um, you know, blessed channels, I guess. And the other has been trying to use this technology as, uh, as tools for liberation and for individual choice. And privacy is also a very important factor to individual choice because there's such a thing called self-censorship, right? If you feel that you're always being surveyed and your identity is out there in the open, then you might you might hold back how you truly feel about a situation and communicating how you feel about it because of you know the fear of repercussion of, of what might become of it, right? Uh, so there's this whole self-censorship that comes with, with surveillance. 
uh, especially in uh, in you know certain countries where you could literally be jailed or executed um, for this sort of thing, or you know in other countries where you just draw unnecessary attention to yourself, which can produce headaches down the line. So the cypherpunks, you know, they've been using uh, cryptography. They they invented things like uh, PGP encryption, you know, which which is uh, which is key for a lot of uh, encryption today, especially for sending people encrypted email messaging and stuff like that. Um, so they, they, um, they invented that and they also started working on the first prototypes of, of Bitcoin. You know, you had, um, um, you know, Bitgold, you also had hash cash, you had all these various different prototypes. And then finally Satoshi Nakamoto just built on those prototypes and he he created a working uh, functioning model the first functioning model of uh, of peer to peer electronic cash and he first sent his white paper out to the cypherpunk mailing list so that this is the first community that started in on bitcoin and then it grew from there right and you still have many cypherpunks who are um developers of the Bitcoin protocol, right? And, and <clears throat> you know, the Bitcoin protocol can, uh, can change and it can adapt similar to how technology adapts. And there are a few key factors that are important to make Bitcoin what it is, such as, you know, having it capped at 21 million, having it as a proof of work algorithm, making sure that it's uh, used for or values individual privacy <clears throat> and that it's censorship resistant and peer to peer, right? So you can make other modifications and there have been many modifications since the early protocol, but as long as you keep those core principles, then you'll always have Bitcoin. As soon as you start deviating from that, as soon as you start requiring, you know, people to tag their identification with KYC and all this, all this crap on the Bitcoin protocol. As soon as you tell people, well, you can send money and you can't, and you're restricted and you can't, so, and so then it's not Bitcoin anymore, right? And yeah. the, the beautiful thing is because it's open source, the likelihood of that ever happening is probably close to zero, right? Because anyone could take the code and make their own version and whatever, right? It's it's the thousand headed hydra believe me if the system and the governments around the world could have controlled it to that capacity they would have a long time ago the only reason why it's around and they tolerate it is because it is so resilient because of its open nature yeah and and that's really important of and this is where the the power of of what the cypherpunks uh, started to build on in. And I, I like this phrase because everybody is standing on a show, the giants, and that's what they said about Shotoki, um, that there's a bunch of people before working on this and, and it's always a, a progress. Like we just don't magically get, you know, uh, a, you know, someone doesn't magically just make a, a whole system that's complete on its own. It takes progress. But uh, that it being decentralized and open source Meaning that that there's no centralized uh, power or 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 server that where someone could take a point of control, and and that's the part the the root of what makes it special is because, um, you know that old old saying and this is goes beyond just uh, uh, the digital space that um you know power corrupts but absolute power corrupts absolutely and this is something that yeah um and it's funny too because what what centralized power says is that oh you can't trust your fellow man and and humans are are kind of flawed so we need to take control uh of some of your rights to protect you but th but they're also human as well so what's protecting us from them in a sense <laughs> and so this kind of yeah. takes takes that out of the equation right <clears throat> it's like everybody's kind of responsible for themselves and 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 in a decentralized manner uh, taking that out of the equation, that there's there's no uh, uh, enticement for someone to taking um, control in that sense of being corrupt, absolutely, and that it's open so everybody could have that trust of in, in the system because 
because ultimately you have to have that 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 trust in the system and it's not a blind trust uh it may take some work and research but you can um see it for yourself and and confirm it um so all this stuff is absolutely is actually really important too was what we're talking about and and before um say what we were talking about on the markets um what is happening in these these different situations where where bitcoin's becoming more of a store of value is in those situations where we talked in the first half is that people are not trusting the banks and with with uh very good um reasons why and um even here in in maybe uh the the western states too you got to be worried uh, they're always devaluing the dollar or as you were saying uh, the canadian dollar and this is something maybe you don't want to store all your your money in but something to kind of have uh in replacing to like say your savings or 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 your investment it would be wise to to at least look into it but i like the social as- uh, absolutely oh, yeah i like the social aspect of it as well where you were saying how um the south censorship which is which is um, uh because there's still a battle for internet freedom uh you know we see this in the social media um world and and with the security and this and that so you know you you say oh um you don't have nothing to worry about if if you're not doing anything wrong which (laughs) which is not the case either where you're talking about if you're worried that something you say might get misconstrued or or if you just want to vent about your frustrations about something and then it, it's going to be held against you later especially this is what happened where this great migration of the the Thai users from Facebook came over to the United I mean came to to mines because Facebook handed over private messages of people venting about their frustrations with the government and now they're facing 15 years charges for for agreeing that the government sucks and it's as simple as that <laughs> And it's just like, man, and and they wonder why they have all this this um, problems with 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 the people not trusting the government, and they do stuff like that. Like it's a, a self fulfilling prophecy. But th- this is you know, and in, here in the states, you it, it's it's more like a coercion by consensus. Like oh, you're afraid on on Facebook. There's a bunch of different examples of of people worrying about you know or how 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 am i perceived by by the the public in in a sense that you've seen people lose their jobs because of different things they have posted uh maybe they had a bad day or whatever but there Mm. there's there's something to be said about uh the power of freedom of speech and yes you know there's problems with that but you have to give like you know you either have freedom or you don't and it is kind of like yeah and and i think overall the big picture we're all better off with with uh f- true freedom of speech and true f- freedom of expression and i think in a lot of ways too it makes it what we're talking about other uh, uh in the other show which i liked a lot is that it builds your Im- immunity to bullshit so it, it, it creates yes you know what i mean like you know you could as as you get more opinions of freedom of speech and and as you kind of like self-correct yourself and you be a little bit fluid and open and and maybe build up your guard to to the bullshit that you could you could see you could start you know building those habits and then now you could kind of trust your intuition a little bit more about uh, filtering out or having a, a, a sense for bullshit ever not getting and you it might be take it might take you um, being bought into some bullshit and learning your lessons say the hard way as far as you know what we were saying earlier in the trading market where you might so you, you know you do it steadily so you, you're gonna lose and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have uh, pitfalls but try to minimize them as much as you can and learn from them as rapidly as you can but uh I mean, yes. mm-hmm. what what is was the alternative is that you you blindly follow whatever, and then you're at the whim of the said central authority, and then you get all these this this stuff where and we're talking about it in the markets, but also there's social re- repercussions. But 
for instance, they you you trust in the government and you you put your your money in the bank and you you think that it's going to be there and then at a whim or for whatever reason and it might not even be yours like for instance with the the, the stock market crashing you know you you've been told all all your life that you should trust into it and overall this is good for you and this and that and then what happens a select few people go and uh, play with everybody's future and they lose and then everybody loses instead of you kind of having that own responsibility and now it's harder but i think for for me and for other people i think too that are just getting interested in this that this is where it comes down to and what we always kind of say is that you know with uh with freedom comes responsibility and and um i think it's very important that these principles because the battle is still raging on with with uh, internet freedom and these tools that we mm-hmm. have that created out of the cypherpunk movement are really good things to investigate really good things to be aware of and and um uh, i got what i i like the the more of the the possibilities of what's what what the blockchain has to offer to us and we're still working those out through different things and it's going to take a lot of self-correcting with um, say all the dApps and the and the DAO and all that kind of stuff that um and then i think we mentioned this in in an earlier show too that it's it's a com- complex issue and you're saying about how different um altcoins need market makers right and yes and that's where some some of the stuff gets short-sighted because you know they don't think about what you were saying the supply part of the market where they they didn't have like a cap on it which which uh mm. could make it hard say for the investors to like keep its value right in 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 the project mm-hmm. and keep it steady and keep it stable Absolutely. and so it could be able to survive and that's a big part of it isn't it yeah abs- <clears throat> absolutely for sure it's uh you know we're experiencing a real balance here you know between the philosophy of freedom and business entrepreneurship um money finance you know and and in many people's minds those those things could be kind of polar opposites right but they shouldn't be and the reason for that as as long as as long as we have these things at different ends of the spectrum you know we're all, we're always going to end up with uh with problems and and you know financial fraud and all that kind of stuff whereas if we start to apply ethics and apply uh the principles of liberty to business to finance you know create abundance create wealth and then find ways of adding value to people's life in the process of doing that, right? And uh, the beautiful thing about open networks that I really enjoy, like the internet, for example, is that it's it really levels the playing field. You know, like I mentioned earlier, it's a it's a meritocracy, right? You self-select yourself to succeed. It's a self-selection process right? The tools are there. They're cheap. They're available. All that's required as, uh, of the individual is a little bit of um, studying and some determination to make something happen for themselves by using the internet, right? And it gives everyone a voice. And, you know, you have, you have people in, in uh, you know, poor neighborhoods or areas of the world who are making millions of dollars on YouTube, right? <laughs> you know, they they uh, they make some uh, some popular YouTube videos. They make a series on a shoestring budget, maybe with their the phone or the camera on their phone. And uh, you know, next thing you know, they're 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 making revenue stream off of that, and and it's it's getting people out of poverty. That's a self selection process, right? Anyone has a capacity to do that with the internet. Right. It's not it's not like these people are part of like a select few like, you know, money, money for the most part and and wealth. It was definitely passed down generational and guarded among certain families for the longest time and so on and so forth. But now with open networks, it's really leveling the playing field and allowing more people the opportunity to play the game. 
on a on a higher level. And so the same goes for blockchain technology, right? It's taking that and it's it's taking it a step further. And whereas you know the internet is a, a network of communication, you know, Bitcoin and blockchain is like the internet of money. You know, it's a network of value. So it, it has communication elements to it, just like the internet in a decentralized way, except now we're transferring value. Now anyone can be their own bank. Now anyone can issue their own currency and be their own quote unquote central bank, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so all, all they need to do is have the right knowledge and put in the right perseverance and the right strategy to make their project viable, right? Whether they're dealing with a blockchain project, their own cryptocurrency, their own web, obviously their own website, social media, whatever, you know? Um, it's a self-selection process. And, you know, ask me if a few years ago, if I, if I knew anything about, you know, blockchains and how to do online marketing and build websites and all that stuff, you know, I was, I was totally in a, a another reality you could say right um but i saw it as an opportunity for freedom and that's what inspired me to work so hard at it and i've like i'll literally i've been working at it 12 hours a day at least seven days a week for for years just hustling you know that's why that's why my site's called crypto hustle right? um but i love doing it it's not work to me it's it's my passion i enjoy doing it and this is uh i have the most freedom that i've ever had in my life right this is more freedom than waking up in the morning and going to work some job that i hate and getting stuck in rush hour traffic and you know just counting the hours down till the weekend i don't even know what a weekend is anymore you know <laughs> like yeah <laughs> you know Ask, ask me what I would do on my time off. You know what I'll do on my time off? I'll work. <laughs> I'll do what I'm doing now. I'll hustle because I love doing it. You know, this is this is what I I'm making money and and creating business and trading and doing what I would do for fun on my spare time when I was working a job. Right. I just found a way to to make a living at it. And um you know, it's does you don't start off. It's not like you start off and it's super easy. There's a lot of challenges at first, right? That's why it takes so much work on the on the front end. But I'll tell you, most of the successful entrepreneurs I know, like people, people might have this idea that you know, successful entrepreneurs or you know, rich people or whatever, they just sit and drink pina coladas at the beach, you know, like Playboys or something. I mean. Um, a lot of them work 12 to 15 hours a day, you know, at their business. Um, very, very hardworking individuals. Um, so all we need to do is is take that 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 perseverance and apply it ethics to it and and a philosophy of liberty to it to make our world a better place, right? Because when we think about it, entrepreneurs are creating uh, many new things, many new innovations and introducing new things to the world and, and strategically making things happen. We just got to get out of the old crappy business model of exploiting uh, people and resources to squeeze every little penny out of them <laughs> and, and find and, you know, kind of create a, 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 a mutually beneficial value-based um, renewable economy, right? Oh, something that's a win-win for everyone, you know? And not every, and you know, not everyone wants to be an entrepreneur because obviously there, there are risks, um, you know, there are challenges and it might not be for everyone and that's okay, right? People just have to do whatever makes them happy, you know? But those people should be equally as respected and given opportunities to to excel in whatever it is that they do as well. So that's what I love. That's what I love about where this technology is going and the possibilities, you know, because now we get obviously like things like mines where you, you get rewarded for, for social activity and you could either sell them or, you know, use them to boost points for marketing or whatever. 
and you have various different other platforms with cryptocurrencies attached to activity and value and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's really quite remarkable, in, in my opinion, what's, what's happening uh, because, you know, in the traditional legacy markets, there's a lot of frictions. They create a lot of barriers for the average individual to get started. You know, if you want to start being a, a stock day trader or whatever, you need at least you know, twenty thousand dollars in in your your account, right? And then you need to go through third party broker, and you need to do all this paperwork, and you know, it's a big. There's a lot of friction to get there for 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 the person who's just starting off. Those are those are large barriers and hurdles for them to to jump. And now you compare that to, hey, I want to start learning how to trade crypto or investing in crypto. Well. What do I have in my pocket? I have five dollars. Well, you can go sign up on a lot of exchanges anonymously with very little friction. Take your five dollars of Bitcoin, you know, maybe trade some of the low cap coins, triple, quadruple it a few times over, and then you're building up your capital and you're you're getting somewhere, right? Um, so there's a lot less friction. It just requires more effort on the part of the individual. It requires the individual to to uh, proceed with due diligence and to to work with perseverance because it's not easy that's why there's not a huge uh user base for crypto right now that's why we haven't reached mass user adoption because it hasn't been simplified enough for the everyday individual and hasn't been made secure enough for the everyday individual you can make it really really secure with things like trezor so on and so forth two-factor authentication um however for the average individuals, these are all new concepts, and and a lot of it hasn't been broken down for them. Um, and even if it is broken down, they still have to take the step of of wanting to just figure it out and and take the extra steps to make it happen, right? But if they're willing to put in, you know, a bit of time and have a little bit of perseverance, then there's a lot of opportunity in this market. You know, think. Think the early internet, right? There are opportunities here for for those who want to get some some skin in the game and life changing opportunities as well. Yeah, and I think that's the big point is that it's finally giving us the structure and, and um, helping facilitate that that true kind of liberty and freedom principle of of kind of you know you we mentioned it before we said it's like the wild wild west it's and just kind of like the new frontier <laughs> there was freedom and liberty but it, it came at a cost and it wasn't easy and it was, you know things didn't c come get spoon fed to you but it also made you kind of tougher uh build up your skills and as long as you had that perseverance that you you it made it made you better for it and also i think too in this kind of climate atmosphere makes everybody better for it um i i just read a, a post Absolutely. from from a friend of mine and she was kind of this was on on facebook and she was kind of saying that uh you know she she basically saying a little bit beaten down right she like she sees all this kind of uh corruption and, and negative and violence in the world and she wants to do something positive and good but she just doesn't see an avenue for it and and I I remember, kind of prior to me moving over to mines, I kind of had that that mindset, of kind of like oh where do I go from here or what do I do from here, and it wasn't until like I had a a a, a venue to kind of explore and to express myself more and and to meet with more people and network, in in a more free um, environment, I'm not afraid. Uh, to speak my mind and, and seeing oh if somebody's going to take it the wrong way or whatever um, that I started to really say you know what okay enough of the complaining there's plenty of information and tools out there now how do I use them and it is taken me and it's going to it's a continued process but I could see you know the avenues and, and different things opening up and it's not necessarily you, you say you know like in the the cryptocurrency uh trading world which i i mean i am very much uh involved or or 
researching all cryptocurrencies and blockchain technologies and all that kind of stuff and I, I see kind of my my more role of more developing as kind of like say said uh, journalist of that or whatever and broadcasting my show which has been interesting in itself is where people kind of say oh man you're so good at the video editing or you're doing so good with the show and it's the same thing as what you're mm-hmm. saying is that I just laugh because like say two months ago I had no experience doing any of this stuff <laughs> and it just it was just a kind of a passion for me and there's like kind of no secret I just put in the work there's like you know there's no like special yeah. gift <laughs> it just takes me spending days upon days of doing tedious work in the video editing or tedious <laughs> work researching and making sure I'm prepared for a show and so I could kind of go off the cuff because I, I feel confident in my research and it's just that it's just but he did the work and there's the information there is available to you and kind of just pick it up but yeah <laughs> exactly exactly there's exactly like you said there's no there's no secret to it you know i mean that's like, again another beautiful thing with the internet is most of this information is open sourced it's free knowledge that's available you know so like how do i do video editing oh here's a video on it Ooh, i made this mistake why isn't this working let me uh let me put that in a search engine oh that's why okay you know like you could pretty much do anything uh yeah. with the internet now you know even even uh even just fixing things uh on my house and and stuff like that you know if i don't know how something works with with plumbing or how to fix something, I'll just look it up and then I figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's probably the main thing if anybody wants to dig deeper into to cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, blockchain. And it's it's what you were saying, it's kind of this uh, new frontier. So it's really easy kind of to reach out to people and to get in and kind of uh, go directly to some of the sources and, and you could see videos and and the more you do it, you know, you could you could reach out to people, and some most people are kind of eager to kind of share their knowledge, and you know what I mean. Like that's the beauty of the internet as well. Mm-hmm. Like uh, you just take some some initiative and in getting over kind of a little bit of uh, some fear, and you know you might not be successful in your first couple of tries, but there'll be someone that you could probably make a connection to, and really start to learn. Um, but yeah, hey. yeah. Exactly, exactly. You know, um, in my opinion, and and I think uh, many people share this opinion, um, success, the formula to success is how many times do you get up after having failures, right? Um, You know, most successful people probably failed dozens of times, right? And eventually, if you just keep on knocking and you just keep on trying uh, with perseverance, it's going to click, right? And op- like, it's just finally going to work out. Um, and it, like exactly what you said, it, it, it usually takes a few tries, you know? Um, so this isn't, you know, this is my first, uh, you know, business venture at being a, an entrepreneur. You know, I've, I've, uh, I've tried several things in the past that didn't really, uh, didn't really go so well. So, this, but this one is uh, is starting to even with crypto. I mean, when I first started off with crypto, I, I mean, I failed horribly. I lost all kinds of money on getting scammed from uh, from uh, trying to mine, buying these these pre order ASICs, and then I I made some mining equipment and I lost a bunch of money on on electricity and you know I, I tried to get into it through the mining angle and just failed. And and when I first started off. I wanted to give up, you know, after losing thousands of dollars, you kind of want to call it quits. Right. Um, but I didn't, I just continued on and I worked hard, harder at it and I studied more. And then I took those failures that I, that I had in mining and I learned from them and I made sure not to apply them to trading. I made sure to start off very cautiously and judiciously as I was learning the waters, you know, as I was, uh, observing the terrain and building strategies, right? Until I got to a point of proficiency, that's when I started to put real money on the line. And, you know, every now and again, you'll take a hit, but, you know, 
if I take a hit, it's just it's just a reduction in overall profit because I'm I'm definitely net profit over my trading in the past few years uh, by a long shot. So, um, but that's because I've learned my lesson from getting, um, you know, by getting uh, ripped off and losing a bunch of money on um, on mining and. I'm also extremely skeptical of new coins and projects. Like, don't get me wrong, I'll make I'll make money and flip coins on on anything, whether it's a crap or not, right? But you're not gonna you're not gonna see me, you know, chanting moon dreams about shilling some new coin or whatever, right? Um, my approach is to try to be uh, open yet discerning, to be objective, and to always look at both sides in any situation. And to take my profits while I'm ahead and not bag holder, because a lot of these projects just kind of tank after a while anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, and that's a good um, sentiment to leave it at. And I, I think I want to uh, emphasize that as well is that, um, you know, you're going to fail on whatever it is, is in the cryptocurrency world or anything. Is This is good advice for anything you get yourself into. But it's it, the kind of those ethos of open source. And, and what we're talking about in the blockchain world is to be able to self uh, course correct yourself and keep on changing and being a little bit fluid where you're talking about the the Bitcoin um, protocols, but kind of chain, staying true to, to say that those um, liberty principles and hard work and perseverance that will help you along the way. And, you, you know, your course might change or whatever, but as long as you stay to those principles, you should be good. And I'll leave it at, at this favorite quote of mine is that... Uh, the master has has the only difference between the master and the student is that the master has failed more times than the student has even tried. So keep on getting at it, I guys. I love it. Yep. I, I love it. I love it. That's a that's a great way to uh, to end this for sure. All right. So my website is cryptohustle dot com on this website there's all kinds of guides on how to get started with bitcoin and i also put a special emphasis on uh, market uh the markets so you know it's it's geared for towards uh, beginners crypto enthusiasts investors and traders cryptohustle.com